I took the void you at all costs. Cause I was doing good to us to listen and falling off. Word to the wise. Hey. Shalom family. Brother and Elder T. Hayman the Hebrew. Back with number three of Word to the Wise. The scripture tells us in the book of Proverbs, chapter one, verses two through five. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give sub subtility to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion, a wise man will hear and will increase in learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Now the word subtility or subtlety, the definition of that word, it means thinness, finesse, auxility, in a physical sense, as the subtle of air or light, the stability of sound, Re refinement, extreme acuteness. And that's what Word to the Wise is about. As you see on the thumbnail, more people would learn from their mistakes if they weren't so busy denying them. In just a second, I got a short audio clip that I think that it behooves all of us to really listen intently and diligently and I truly pr pray that it blesses you with these words as the scripture told us in uh, Proverbs 2 and 5 that a wise man shall hear okay and attain to counsel to wise counsel now the track that I'm playing in the background is word to the wise I should avoid you at all costs I was doing good to I started listening to you to start falling off Real destruction I did, before a fall Consider what I know, consider what word to the wise. I should avoid you at all costs, cause I was doing good to our start listening. You just started falling off. Private for destruction. How they look before a fall. Consider what I consider what I was taught. Uh yeah. So I'm live right now doing this recording, but without further ado, you know, let's go ahead and get into this uh short audio clip for Word to the Wise Wednesday, and then I wish you a higher speed, most high blessing, keep you there, family. All right, here we go. Sin has extraordinary power to deceive. It's the first point. Its deceitfulness has a hardening power over the heart. And thirdly, there is a great need for power to fight against sin. We must strive against our cunning enemy and resist him in many ways, one of which is mentioned in the text. Exhort one another daily while it is called today. May the Holy Ghost put power into our meditation at this hour. First then, sin has an extraordinary power to deceive. We only have to look back to the beginning of our race to be sure of this. Eve in the garden was pure, intelligent, filled with good dispositions. No original sin or natural depravity put her mind out of order. Yet that lovely woman, without a taint upon her heart or will, perfect as she came from her maker's hand, was overcome by Satan who embodied himself in the deceitfulness of sin. The servant played his part very cunning with the woman and soon withdrew her from her loyal obedience to the Lord God. She began to question, to discuss, to argue with rebellious suggestions. And after a while, she put forth her hand and she took the fruit which had been forbidden. And she gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. If man in his perfect godliness was so easily deceived by sin, what do you think of yourself, fallen, inclined to evil as you are? Will not sin soon deceive you? I will even go back fur further than the garden. For the serpent, who was the instrument of evil in the garden, 
was once an angel of God. Lucifer, the light bearer, son of the morning, once stood high in the hierarchy of spirits, but sin entered into his heart, and the sublime angel became a loathsome fiend. Lucifer became Satan, as quick for evil as he once had been quick for good. If sin overcame angels, can we fight with it? If sin entangled in its accursed net even the pure spirits of heaven, what think you, sons and daughters of fallen parents? Will you, will not you soon be deceived by it? Unless the grace of God shall make you wise unto salvation. Since your hearts are deceitful and sin is deceitful, you are in great danger indeed. The deceitfulness of sin will be seen in several points, which I will call to your attention. So under this first point of the ex extraordinary power of sin to deceive, the minister has eight subpoints. Its deceit may be seen in the way it approaches us. Sin does not uncover all its hideousness, nor reveal its horrible consequences, but it comes to us in a very subtle way, offering us advantage. Intellectually, it comes with a question. Shouldn't we question? Are we to receive everything without questioning it? The question is often the thin wedge which Satan drives home by carnal wisdom. Doubt, infidelity, and practical atheism are also in this wedge. Sin may be encouraged because of a doubt as to its penalty. Yea, hath God said, is the speculative question which is meant to undermine the foundation of godly fear in the heart. How tiny a drop of sinful distrust of God's word will poison all the thoughts of the soul. Sin frequently comes as a bare question or an imagination. It is an airy thing, spun of such stuff as dreams are made of. You do not think of committing the fault, nor even talking about it, but you think of it pleasantly and view it in your mind as a thing bright and lustrous to the imagination. The thought fascinates, and then the spell of evil, evil begins its deadly work. The thought condenses into desire, and desire grows to purpose, and purpose ripens into action. So slyly does sin come into the soul that, that it is there before we are aware of it. I have known a sin to make its way in by the repulsion of another sin. A man has waited. Mm. So sin makes his way in through another sin. The blessed scripture informs us and admonishes us, exhorts us to consider ourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. What is sin? According to 1 John 3 and 4, sin is the transgression of the Most High's law. Romans 6 and 12 through 18 tells us, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal or physical body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. And sin is very sneaky, very tricky, and very subtle. Verse 13 tells us, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto the Most High as those that are alive from the dead in your members as instruments of righteousness unto the Most High. 14. For sin shall not have dominion or power over you. 
for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Now, before, you know, you get to going and saying that, oh, there's no law. This is not speaking of the law of faith, according to Romans chapter 3. Do we then now uh, do away with the law? A higher forbid. We, through faith, establish the law. When you look at Romans 8, verses, let me get it, verses 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Yeshua hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, the law of sin and death, and that it was weak through the flesh, through our mortal members, our carnal mind, our body, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life. The Most High sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 4, Romans 8 and 4, that the righteousness of the law, what law? The law of faith in Yasha Hamashiach, uh, Hamashiach be fulfilled in us, distinguishing who walk not after the flesh, the physical, the uh, uh, the mortal, okay, but after the spirit. Verses five, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. Verse 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life in peace. Going back over to Romans chapter 6 and verses 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law. And now that you know that that law is according to Romans 8 and 2, is the law of sin and death and not the law of faith written in the book of Romans chapter 3 and verses uh, 1 second. The law of faith. Verses 27. Where is boasting, then it is excluded by what law? Of works, nay, but by the law of faith. And here is the patient of the saints, those who keep the law, or the, that's right, those who keep the commandments of the Most High, Romans, Romans chapter uh, 14 and verses 12, not Romans, excuse me, Revelation. Revelations 14 verses 12 states, here is the patient of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High in faith of Yeshua. See, so we must keep the Most High's law. Going back to uh, Romans 6 and 15 now. Picking up or continuing from verses 14 where it says, For sin shall not have dominion or power over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. So grace is a grace period. Grace is something that was afforded to you that you cannot earn grace. It's a kindness. It is uh, compassion. It is mercy. Verse 15, it says, For it says, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law? What law? The law of sin and death. This is speaking to those who walk not after the flesh. So those who walk not after the flesh, because we just read in Romans 8, to be carnal minded is death, right? When we read in Romans 8, and I believe it was verses 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Let me wrap this up. So it tells us here in Romans 6 and verses 15 
What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? The most high forbid. Verse 16 and closing out. Know ye not that to whom ye or to whom you or I yield ourselves servants to obey, his servants are ye to whom you obey, whether, here we go, of sin unto death, that law, or of obedience unto righteousness. And last verse before I leave you. Romans 8 and 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Hamashiach or Yeshiah Hamashiach, or Yeshiah Hamashiach who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. See? For the law of the spirit, verses 2, of life in Christ Yeshiah have made me, has made you, my brothers and sisters, free from the law of sin and death. And with that being said, I say, Shala to the Wam, another wonderful uh, installment of Word to the Wise. Most high blessing. Keep you dear family. And look forward to hearing and seeing you all in the Sabbath service. Worship and Bible study. Word to the wise. I should avoid you at all costs because I was doing good till I started listening to you then started falling off. Pride before destruction. How they look before a fall. Consider what I know. Consider what word to the wise. I should avoid you at all costs because I was doing good till I started listening to you then started falling off. Pride before destruction. How they look before a fall. Consider what I know. Consider I was taught. Word to the wise. Yeah. Be blessed. Onwards to Zion.